Uh, Gabriella, to, to the point in the theme there, uh, <laughs> such momentum uh, at the moment. Uh, is there a point? How do you try and work out where the point is uh, you have to step off the horse, as it were? Yeah, I mean, the horse rode very, very fast last year. So great news for returns last year, but bad news in terms of the starting point for this year. So when we do look at PEs at 19 times, we think there's very lit limited room there for multiple expansion to support returns. They're going to be much more in line with earnings growth, which we think should end up between 3 to 5 percent. So what do we do? Doesn't mean we give up on equities altogether, but maybe we rebalance, right? We think more about a balance between value and growth, and we think a bit more about regional diversification, especially emerging markets. That's maybe where we can get a little bit higher return. We just talked so much about how hot the tech sector has been, mm -hmm. how much of the market is concentrated there. But when you strip away all of that and you look at it, that is where the growth is, though. So if you trim now, are you going to miss out on the sector that is the hottest? Because it should remain the hottest based on what they're turning out. And very, very much agree that technology is a structural theme. It's not by any means last decade's uh, theme, uh, especially when you look at more the software technology names. So we wouldn't give up on tech. It's just rebalancing a little bit towards, shall we say, the beaten down and forgotten value sector, which a lot of our clients are extremely underweight at this point. And let's remember value is also where you can get income, which is really important in this more limited capital appreciation market. Lindsay, for all the focus on momentum being the driver, we're up, what, 2% or so this week. Is it not down to earnings? Have we not got a fundamental reason why we're higher this week? Yeah, I mean, we are, we're going to start to see that fundamental reason come through. For sure, the banks started and they kicked us off with earnings this week. And, and the numbers were pretty good, you know. And, and that, that also is a reflection of, of the consumer and the strength of the consumer economy that we've, we've had to endure over the last uh, couple years here. So we're going to get here more next week. You have about 40 or so more companies reporting at the end of the month. We're really going to get into the heart of it. But the expectation is for earnings to decline just under 2 percent, 1.9 percent. That number's already moving up with, with with the strength in the bank earnings, with, with growth uh, in, in EPS for the banks above 11 percent. I think one area where you can see a surprise really is the tech sector. We're looking for a decline of 1.1 percent. That's a consensus estimate. And I think so far we've had only a handful of companies in the tech sector report, but the numbers have been really good being on both the top and the bottom line. So I think that's where a surprise can come from. And Gabriella, speaking of good numbers, we saw a number of these bank earnings report some strength and in fixed income mm -hmm. in that area. Should we be taking clues from what they've been able to experience looking forward at 2020? How are you doing fixed income? So it's interesting, right? We had in the fourth quarter, finally, a bit of a decrease in those very latent risks that we had had throughout uh, the year uh, last year. So much better environment for investment decisions, for trading. So that certainly helped a lot of the big banks. In terms of fixed income specifically, um, we continue to think that yields are probably range bound, given where they've already fallen so far this year. Strong start to fixed income as well. Uh, so we think having a balance there between credit, things like high yield, local emerging market debt, as well as insurance, things like mortgage-backed securities and treasuries. So a bit of a balance, a barbell there in fixed income. In terms of the overseas exposure you were saying worth boosting, where in particular? Not developed overseas, but emerging? So I think, you know, for a couple of years there, a strong case U.S. versus everybody else. This year, not so much, right? So bringing those underweights that so many of our clients have to international altogether, closer to a neutral makes sense. If we're talking about a little bit more enthusiasm, a little bit more overweight, for us, it would be emerging Asia. We've already started to see those earnings expectations drift higher uh, in line with this better stability in the numbers, including China and the rest of Asia.